Okay, so my presentation is going to be on desire and neoliberalism at Ensel Tower. Um, my thesis is that the Ensel Tower is a place where natural human desires are commercialized and therefore is a persisting symbol of the implementation of neoliberalistic ideology in capitalist society. So I wanted to just start with a brief overview of the tower itself. Um, I know we talked a lot about um, phallic architecture in modern and postmodern architecture. So I think the Ensel Tower is a good example of that kind of phallic structure being um, being uh, built. And then we also have the um, on the right, there is a ad on the bottom half of the tower that we saw that was being projected onto it. Um, so just very um, like very obvious things when you first look at the tower. Um, so I want to talk about two desires that I think are commercialized at the Ensel Tower. So the first is the the desire for connection and togetherness and um, that kind of idea of being together forever. And um, and so I wanted to talk about the love locks in regards to that, as well as I wanted to draw attention to the fact that on the Ensel Tower official website, it does say under the um the title says a romantic island in the city so this kind of idea of romantic and social place um is very much facilitated by um by the tower itself and the tourism surrounding the tower um and then we also have the desire for experiences and sharing experiences with others and um just having experiences um that's why people travel to have experiences and um that's why people learn like the the desire to have experiences is a very human thing i feel um so i'm going to draw attention to those three things under that as well so the love locks i wanted to touch on how they previously were not um something that you could buy at the tower um and then the ensel tower began to kind of put it in their gift shops on the on the right you can see that that's those are um in their gift shops I believe I, I think I remember that um and then there's a vending machine too um and the prices were very high I think the lowest was like ten dollars um to get a love lock so this kind of um idea that in order to lock your love forever you have to pay and put the lock there and that kind of has a lot of meaning for people but in reality they're just being I believe it's interpolation I think they're they're being influenced into doing this thing and they believe that it will it will bring them that connection that they that they want and need maybe um, and I wanted to draw attention to the dichotomy um, between the idea of social with the love locks and the idea of social um, within the influence of neoliberalism. So I found this quotation in my research. Um, it says, the social as we have known it has been disassembled by neoliberalism. There is no community, but instead a set of self-interested individuals organized by definition through competition rather than cooperation, the notion of common good now an oxymoron. So that idea that the love locks are a way to cement your social connection with somebody is is ironic to me because um to me the love locks themselves are a result of neoliberalism but they also kind of go against what neoliberalism is actually doing to the population um, and then I just wanted to draw attention to the fact that um this really does mean something to people as you can see in the top left somebody actually went from the U.S. to South Korea to break the lock because it probably um, has a lot of meaning to her. Um, it, I mean, she could have just been going to like visit family, but like her actually going up to the tower with pliers and like breaking it is very um, telling, I feel, to show how much this means to people. And I wanted to draw attention to the fact that um, they actually replaced the gates before because they were getting too heavy. So your love really isn't locked there forever. And that's something that somebody from the Seoul Tourism Organization actually said. So I think um, this is kind of an example of like visuality, how um, they don't really want you to see that they have replaced the locks. Um, 
but it's it's certainly something that has happened. Um, and then I wanted to talk about the desire for experiences. So um, in social media, there's there's a desire to have those pictures, kind of calling myself out there, because in the bottom right, that's a picture of Cassie and I at the Insel Tower on my Instagram. <laughs> um, so I kind of wanted to draw attention to the fact that like when people have these experiences, they have this this desire to share them with others. And um, and that can certainly be a result of neoliberalism because um, we're all just trying to um, we're all trying to show people, hey, like I did this thing Um and also probably an example of interpolation. So um, you you kind of have these pictures of this thing that you did that you think is cool. So you feel that you have to post it and show it to others. And then that in turn provides Ensel Tower with like kind of an advertisement in, in that way. Um, and then there's obver- observation decks. Um, and I wanted to talk about how if you could go if you wanted to go higher and see like a a a higher view then you had to pay more so um there's kind of a class division there um and it's very very cliche but it's like literally a symbol of like climbing the social ladder like if you have the money to go higher in the tower then you go higher in the tower um and I also wanted to talk about how when you look out at the city, it's a very, um, it's a very beautiful and bright picture of Seoul. And it's very, um, it looks very modern. And that in turn can provide maybe um, people who live in Seoul or South Koreans or just um, humans in general to see like, wow, look at all these things that humans have achieved. Um, but in reality, as we talked about with the um, picture with the satellite photo of North Korea and South Korea, um, you professor said that the the ideology like the ideology wants you to grab the lowest hanging fruit, which is that North Korea is dark, so it's bad, and South Korea is light, so it's good. But in reality, we don't see the kind of things that um, are actually going on inside of Seoul. Um, So I wanted to talk about this quotation that I found in another article in my research. Um, It says, the picture of South Korea's vibrant growth often leaves out how new forms of social precarity reflecting a broader global economic reordering have become a prevalent feature of the post-financial crisis period of the social world. Um, Oh, no, this quotation was from a reading from class, actually. So um, this kind of growth that we we perceive in those lights and that that city view back here um, in the the middle uh, picture, um, it's it's not really the case. Like you can't um, just look at all the lights and all the buildings and think, okay, everything's fine. We're modern. So we've achieved what we need to achieve. Um, but in reality, it doesn't show all the people living in really bad conditions, really bad housing conditions. Uh, the migrant workers, we don't see them. We don't see any workers. We don't see all of the social problems that are happening with this picture of Seoul. Um, it's a lot more complex than just, okay, lights are good. <laughs> uh, buildings are good. All the cars, everything. Um, and then I just wanted to briefly mention that there's a lot of restaurants and gift shops and stuff. So a lot of things that are bringing in money to the Insel Tower, as well as the um, the cable car. You had to pay to do the cable car, but you don't have to pay to walk up, which is like another example of that kind of like subtle class divide. Because um, obviously walking up is harder and the cable car is easier. Um, and then... Yeah, here are my references. Um, I probably went over time, but hopefully that's okay. Um, Thank you very much for listening and thank you for teaching us for a month.